Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our Marge Online Psychology course talk today uh, and thank you for joining us. I'm joined by Hazel and Alistair from the course as well as Natasha and Georgina who are two of our student ambassadors. Hazel and Alistair will be talking about the course for around 15 minutes uh, and Natasha and Georgina will also be uh, giving their input from the student perspective um, and then we'll move on to the Q&A. Uh, so please drop your questions into the Q&A bar and we'll get to these during the session uh, and then also in the Q&A uh, portion of the talk towards the end. Um, I'll drop a question in there in a minute just so you guys can see where it is. Um, and yeah, uh, hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, Hazel, over to you. OK, thank you, Phil. So my name's Hazel Bending. I'm the programme lead for the um, BSc Honours in Psychology and the BSc Sport and Exercise Psychology. So I'm going to come talk through the slides with you today about our two programmes. But I'm also joined, as Phil's just said, by Alistair, who's one of the senior lecturers on the programme, and Georgina and Natasha. So Alistair, would you like to say hello? Hi folks, lovely to have you here today. Um, look forward to hopefully seeing some of you in person, face to face, in either this September or a September down the line. Thank you. Uh, Georgina? Hi, uh, I've just finished my second year of the course and yeah, it'd be good to see some of you soon. Thank you. And Natasha? Um, hi, I'm Natasha, I'm a first year at the moment and hopefully like to do this, we see some of you in the course when it starts up again in September. Great, thank you. And so what we're going to be doing is we're all going to be kind of uh, going through the slides, sort of chipping in. So feel free to kind of ask questions as we go through. But the uh, the way I wanted to do this afternoon uh, was to kind of well I'll start with a bit of an overview. And the way I've designed this PowerPoint is around the questions that I'm often asked at open days. And so I'm going to start with a little bit of an intro about kind of why we all enjoy psychology, because then uh, we can kind of start to see where psychology might begin to take you guys. And um, then I'm going to talk through the different programmes you can do at Marjan, a bit about the staff, what makes our programme particularly different to other psychology programmes, um, the things that you will study and how we create the programme around you. Always get an, a question about exams, so I've thrown that one in there. Um, how often you would expect to be at university and then finally kind of looking at why you should come to Marjan particularly. So as Phil said, uh, feel free to ask your questions as we're going along. Phil, would you like to remind us how we ask questions? Yeah, so you can ask your questions in the Q&A bar. I dropped a quick message in there a minute ago. Uh, hopefully you guys can find that. Um, but yeah, feel free to drop your questions in there and, and the team will get to them uh, when we can. Lovely, thank you. OK, so on to psychology. So as we all know, psychology is the study of the human mind behaviour. So we're looking at how we think, how we feel, how we act, how we interact, not just um, by ourselves, but also in groups. And what's great about psychology is that we can apply the, the theoretical knowledge to different arenas. And so we all come with different experiences of psychology, different areas we want to look at it. So for instance, before I started working at Marjan, I used to work for the prison and probation service and I've worked for the NHS as well. And so kind of for me, psychology has always been about how to support people in stopping offending, how they can change their behaviours how we can make the world a different place. Alistair, would you like to talk about your psychology experience? Yes, thank you. I think thinking back to once upon a time when I studied psychology, I was really fascinated by some of the kind of the early research findings in psychology that you may have studied um, prior to the course, things relating to social psychology, for example. And I think currently, my motivation is a little bit different. I think the minute I'm really interested in how psychology can be applied to make a, a meaningful difference to people's real lives. So you know, Hazel mentioned how you can change people's behaviour. I think that's relevant to a wide range of different contexts, whether it's people's criminal behaviour, whether it's their, um, their health behaviour, for example, how much they exercise or how much they drink or in a sport context, how well they perform. So my kind of interest is in how we can try and 
change things relating to the human mind and the human behavior to try and encourage outcomes that we want to see within individuals but also within society more broadly. Thank you, thank you. How about you Natasha and Georgina, How, what, what brought you into psychology? Um, for me personally I have a bit of interest in education psychology and more specifically helping people with autism and other um, um, other stuff like that so I would like to look into the idea of how can we benefit people like that and make them really shine in school settings and benefiting them and assisting them with like communication skills to make them feel more happy and benefit their health, mental health as well. So for me I am one of the classic people who gets interest in psychology because of all the psychological programs programs and everything you hear about serial killers and stuff like that really got me interested and then when my sister started studying I was like oh show me you know let me have a look uh, so I got interested through that and then now that I've come I'm so interested in mental health I've gone through a million different careers that I want to go like I want to go in but I at the moment I really enjoy working with young people so that is my goal is to potentially go into such a social um social care and working with young people and their mental health Great, thank you. Thank you. And so what you can hear from our four different stories is that studying a psychology degree can take you anywhere. So whether that is a the single honours psychology or whether it's the sport and exercise psychology programme, you can go on and do anything afterwards. So you could, because both programmes are credited, you could go straight into training in those kind of key psychological areas like educational psychology, as Natasha mentioned, or clinical psychology working in the NHS or in sports or in forensics. But then you can also take your psychology degrees and use the knowledge you gain to kind of work with people, whether that's working with people in allied health professions. We've had a couple of graduates who have started their um, social work training and or another one has gone on to look at occupational therapy instead. Uh, we had a graduate a couple of years ago who has taken her psychological knowledge and developed her own business so kind of into marketing into publicity. We've had students who've been really interested in social care and counselling. We've had other graduates, and we've got certainly graduates this year who are going on to work with children, training to be teachers. So whether that's in the early years, kind of looking at nursery settings, kind of the EYITT, or in kind of primary education, becoming primary teachers. So your degree can take you wherever you want it to go. And so kind of thinking about that, the sort of program, the programmes we have at Marjan. So we have our two accredited undergraduate programmes, the, the psychology and the sport and exercise psychology. But maybe you don't want the accredited route. And so there are other programmes you can study which are much more applied. So non accredited, you could perhaps do psychotherapy and counselling or perhaps criminology with psychology or education studies in psychology and then you can stay with us on to masters. So psychology is broad and our staff team reflect that broad idea. So these are our faces and the first thing I have to say about this is that what happens on a September is that our, our technician Tracy here in the middle pins us all up against the same white wall and goes you're having your photo taken now which is why we're, most of us are all on the same background and uh, it near enough always takes us by surprise hence the faces but it's the, it's about the staff team we are all smiling we all enjoy working with students and um, but we also all have different backgrounds different experiences we have the guys who are on uh, the one side of your screen who are uh, interested in kind of sports psychology and sort of sports science in that area and then we have the other part of the team who are interested in things like uh, well, we have Catherine here whose area is developmental psychology. Anna underneath her uh, is really interested in sort of clinical and health psychology. Karina who is a counselling psychologist and so it's broad and so what you get by coming to Marjan is that constant cycle between knowledge and application. So the clients we've worked with, the areas we've worked in, the clients we are still working with and how our psychological knowledge applies to that. 
And so as I was saying, it's this kind of constant cycle. So to give you an example, um, uh, I've just finished a module with year two where we were looking at research methods. And so one of the projects I did with a group is we looked at how social conformity, uh, which is one of those topics that we often study at level three psychology. So how do we conform? What makes us conform? So how does social conformity apply to our current situation of social distancing? What makes some people conform to social distancing and some people reject social distancing or the idea of it? I don't know whether anybody else would like to jump in here and kind of talk a little bit more about the kind of mix between knowledge and application. Shall I go to Alistair first? Thank you. It's it's a very timely chance to talk about psychology in that currently, if you look at some of the leadership challenges faced by the government, to me, that's applied social psychology. It's looking at influence. It's looking at leadership. Um, if you look on the other main headline news um, in year one, Rosanna, who's not with us today, she teaches prejudice, discrimination and stereotyping which is very relevant to the current protests in America and also worldwide. So you can see psychology in real life just by looking on the news most days. And I think one of the interesting things with psychology is its application to real life issues. But then that ability to think, OK, how could we change things here? How could a government be more effective at leadership? How could they encourage greater um, compliance, for example, with uh, social de social distancing recommendations during glorious weather where perhaps the temptations may come into play to go to public places like beaches. So it's that ability to take what we know from social psychology in my case and translate it into real life um, relevance to try and explain what we see but also hopefully try and change the way that people treat each other and, and behave as well. Great, thank you. And so you can see, so it's not just us talking about sort of the clients and the people we've worked with, but it's also about kind of looking at the, the current world and how we can perhaps change the situations there. I know, uh, Georgina, do you want to jump in a bit about your placement here? Yes, so during my second year, I completed placement in a youth centre in Plymouth. Um, and the, the group that I work with, they're all autistic. That's like, it's a specialism group for them. Um, and I, yeah, so I've taken a lot of theories um, in psychology, like anxiety, aggression, frustration, all of the, like, so many different theories. And I've applied what I know to working with the young people, but then also learned a lot from working with them that I've applied back to psychology. So doing my practice, um, doing practice hours, placement hours has been absolutely amazing, actually um drilling in the knowledge and going over it i've gone over it so many times now and applying what i've learned to what i do and yeah that's placement lovely thank <laughs> you thank you and so it is it, it's that constant mix between um kind of thinking about the, the thinking about the world and how we can use psychology so our second years um on, on the single honours psychology programme, they do uh, around about 50 hours placement. So they do placement alongside their modules. Um, so there's no need to kind of take a year out of your degree to do placement hours. Uh, the way the timetable works is you can kind of embed the uh, placement within your uh, kind of teaching time, within your normal degree time. Our sport and exercise psychology students, they do a slightly different placement in year two, where they're very much looking at how they can use or looking at the role of kind of sports psychologist on the pitch side in clubs, in coaching and things. And so that kind of using your knowledge. And so it is. And the placements, um, they're all about the kind of our placements. The students set their own placement up. So it's about the degree that works for you, the things that interest you. Uh, I have other students who have just finished their placement uh, working on NHS wards because that's what interests them. We had a student last year who uh, went to Dartmoor Prison for her placement. And so the placement is about your degree, it's about your future. And that's very much where we see our marge on degrees. We all do the same core modules, but it's about your scope because we want to make it as your degree. Um, and so the core modules, so the core modules are um, designed by the British Psychological Society. So it gives us that accreditation. 
And that accreditation means that as long as you are successful in the degrees, you are able to apply for graduate basis uh, membership of the Psychological Society, which means, as I said earlier, you can step straight into training in clinical psychology, educational psychology and sports psychology. And it means that um, psychology programmes, wherever you study them, have these same core modules. We might all call them different things, but we do the same sort of topics. So we all do topics around developmental psychology. We do uh, cognitive, uh, which is all about the human mind and the way that we think. We do social psychology, kind of looking at the world that we live in. Individual differences about how we are all different we are all the same, we are all human, but we are all unique humans. Uh, biological psychology, looking at how those brain connections work, uh, what happens to the brain following a stroke or a brain injury. I have a second year at the moment who's really interested in um, head injury, um, particularly head injuries um, during sporting incidents. But not just looking at the head injuries, but what impact that has on people's thinking, what impact it has on their memory. They're kind of even if they've just had kind of a brief moment of loss of consciousness or a mild head injury on the pitch that can cause months of um, thinking different differences. We also all look at things like historical or conceptual in, um, issues. So kind of what are the core behind psychology and looking at research methods, which ends in you looking at your project. But then what makes Marjan different is the scope around it. And so you can have we have our core modules, but there are always a sort of choices in assessment questions. So when we're doing coursework, you get to opt from two or three different assessment questions. So it's your scope, what you're interested in. The second years uh, did a module in semester A where they got to create their own assessment questions. So as long as they met the learning outcomes, they could decide what they wanted to write about. And there's times where you choose your placement, you choose the modules that you do. Um, Alistair, would you like to say a little bit more about the sport and exercise modules? Sure. So what I really like about the sport and exercise psychology degree is that sport and exercise psychology is essentially the same social psychology, cognitive psychology, developmental psychology applied specifically to the context of um, sports and exercise. And, through the degree on the core modules, you'll cover the, lots of the key theories that sport and exercise psychologists kind of put into practice when working with athletes, coaches uh, and teams. But we complement that by having sport and exercise psychology specific modules in all three years of the degree. And the way I make sense of it myself is that the first year is about introducing you to the kind of the key areas of uh, research and knowledge and understanding within sport and exercise psychology, things like motivation, anxiety, confidence, uh, emotion. These are really the, the building blocks of, of, of the profession, kind of the key topics. In year two, you build upon those by studying contemporary topics. So you study not just the topics that have been interest, of interest since maybe the 1980s or 1990s and that have kind of filled the psychology sports psychology textbooks like um, the year one topics, but more that reflect what researchers are studying in 2020. So what are the really cutting edge topics and issues and considerations that researchers are, are studying? You really engage with those in year two. In year three, I see year three is about learning about how to do sport and exercise psychology. So how a practitioner takes what they know and makes it useful when working with an athlete or coaches or teams. So the interpersonal skills they might need to use, the um, the contextual intelligence they may need, the use of counselling skills to demonstrate that they're, they're listening and understanding the athletes and the interventions they may use. So, for example, the likes of uh, visualisation interventions or goal setting interventions. So the year three really is about taking what you know and learning how to put it into practice. So we have those three years of building blocks in year one, contemporary topics in year two, doing in year three. Lovely, thank you. 
Thank you. Um, I'm just uh, hand it over to the students now. So, uh, Natasha, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, sort of the uh, the choices you've had in year one and kind of particularly thinking around sort of developmental psychology that you've just finished? Uh, yeah, for example, usually what day um, happens when you have an assessment for um, day you get given the um, what you're doing. So for my last development uh, assessment for developmental psychology, it was to create a web page and um, we were given a lot of opportunities by our lecturer to just make it about one area of developmental psychology that you're interested in. So it's really good in that way that you get to build um, your assessment around what you're personally interested in. So for example, I looked into music therapy and how it can benefit young children, more specifically children with autism and Down syndrome. So it's really good in that sense that it doesn't matter what interested in what you're interested in, you can base what you're interested in around your assessments. So it's good in that sense. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. And and so that kind of sense of it being your degree, your scope continues all the way through uh, right into the third year where at Marjon we're very clear that your dissertation is is your project. And so what our second years are doing at the moment is they're beginning to think about the topics that they want to do in dissertation. And then we match those to a member of staff who is interested in that field. And so I'm going to throw the floor to Georgina to talk a little bit about dissertation planning. So I am currently planning my dissertation. Um, so during first and second year, I've, we've actually done a lot of research ourselves through the research modules and I've kind of figured out what research I like doing, what topics I want to focus on um, and in my first year I did an, uh, some research on how dogs affect anxiety. went really well so I'm looking at doing a dissertation a bit like something to do with that in that area, got some ideas thrown around but um, yeah it's like we've got so much help from it so we've got like powerpoints that have like all um, diagrams to explain how to choose what you want for your dissertation, what um, what kind of research you want it to be, how you want to do, like what method you want to do, all that kind of stuff. And I'm yet to fully finish planning mine, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's really good. You get so much help, and it's all your choice. And you do learn to know what you like and what you don't really, what you aren't as interested in over the two years leading up to dissertation, which is really good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And actually, we've just had a question come in from the audience and um, kind of just asking the students uh, what you've enjoyed so far. Or is there anything you're particularly looking forward to doing on the programme? So I, I think I've really, really enjoyed placement. It's been it's not what I expected. It wasn't the placement I was planning on doing. It was um, it, the place I wanted, the, what I wanted to do. I couldn't guarantee the hours for, so I did this instead as like a side, like as as you know, and not what I was focusing on. But um, I turned out to absolutely love working with young people. It's amazing. It's what I want to want to do for my career now. Um, and it's a, it was such a massive eye opener for me that there's more to mental health than I thought there was. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to my dissertation. I have really enjoyed doing my research so far and it's the big one. I feel like, you know, like this is what we've prepared for. So it's going to be our own research. It's going to be really nice. And I'm, yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Thank you. How about you, Natasha? Um, I, like I said before, really enjoyed the freedom with the course of doing, basing what you, you're interested in around your assessments. So, for example, I, my, my favourite module so far is developmental psychology because it links quite closely to what I like with education psychology, like looking into working with children. So I've been finding all the courses pretty in, all the other courses interesting too. And I'm really looking forward to start my volunteer placements in year two and choosing where I want to go. And it's probably going to be something similar to what um, Georgina has done with um, going into like um, a specialist school and working with children with autism but need to look into that when the second year starts up for me. Great, thank you. Thank you both. Um, so onwards, so the whole um, how many exams do we do question. So on our programmes, every year you do 12 assessments 
and the balance is very much towards coursework. There are exams, there is kind of one or maybe two exams in each year, but out of 12 pieces of work, uh, that is a very small proportion. Uh, for students who can demonstrate that um, even with a kind of additional time, different circumstances, they are not able to perform as well as they can in exams in comparison to coursework, we can always offer um, alternative assessments. Uh, but a bit like um, how we've kind of created the degree about that kind of around knowledge, around the application of it, the assessments are uh, very varied in formats. And Natasha's already mentioned about doing a website in year one. Um, in year two, our students uh, create a game. Uh, so rather than kind of writing an essay on how memory impacts on development, um, they create a game to kind of assess memory. Uh, we have other assessments where there are presentations and there's always an option to uh, video yourself or do a live presentation or, or there's kind of short answer questions around kind of portfolios and things, creating posters, writing research reports and as you would expect a few essays as well. And so the assessment format is really varied because so what we aim to do with our assessment format is not only test your understanding because that's what assessments are for, but also to give you skills that you can then take to the workplace. So by the time you finish your degree with us, you not only got all this psychological knowledge, all this um, application of psychology to the areas that you are interested in, you've also developed a range of skills that the modern workplace is looking for. So you know how to write for different audiences. So you've written formal essays, but you've also been blogging. You've also been creating websites. You've had opportunities to create things, um, particularly in the education sense, um, sector, to make things more fun using games. You've had the opportunities to create posters, to create leaflets. So things that are useful for the workplace. I often get asked how much time uh, you will be spending uh, on your university studies each year and uh, we create in psychology we create a fixed timetable so each week you will need to spend three days a week in class and we fix it uh, so it's always Mondays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, we like this fixed timetable because not only does it then give you Wednesdays so that you can either participate in sports or follow sports or be the cheerleader on the side of the pitch um, or help with the coaching, with the therapy around the sports. So sports is on Wednesdays. And also it means that you have, you know that on Fridays you've got the time free if you need to continue with paid employment or to do some extra voluntary work. And so it's this kind of fixed timetable. We tend to work between um, 9.30 is the earliest we start. We don't really like to start much earlier than 10, but 9.30 is the earliest. I'm fairly sure Natasha's had a module that's been a 9.30 start this year. Oh yes, she nods, it was. Uh, and five o'clock is the absolute latest we finish. It's often much more around kind of 4, 4.30. And so for those of you with caring responsibilities, whether they are elders or youngers, um, you are looking at definitely kind of af after school care, uh, but it may well be that kind of uh, the morning school run you can do if you are very local to Plymouth. Um, but on top of your three days a week, you'll need to find time to do kind of director study or independent study around that. Uh, we've had another question that's come in, um, my students. Um, people asking, how much time do you spend studying around class? Um, I'd say probably, um, I try to say a good healthy amount is around two to three hours a day, depending on what you're doing to make sure that you're learning stuff and make sure you've properly understood the lecture beforehand. And then if you've got an essay coming up, you can plan it and have enough time to gather your resources and start putting it together into one huge document. So I'd say try to aim for around two to three hours if you can each day. Lovely, thank you. G Georgina, are you able to put a number on it? Do you know what? Not two, three hours a day, but I'm more, more, I'm more of a person that like I go to my lectures, I come back and that's me done for the day. Like I need to sink, everything needs to sink in. But I am the person where I will sit and I will 
so I'm, I'll be in like two days a week so then three days off I will be sitting and I'll be getting on with my studying unless I've got an essay and then I do tend to spend like an hour or two in it every single day but you do also need a, at least a day just to sit but like not think about your essays because it does sink in and then you'll go back to it and then you'll have already thought about it without realising and then you can crack on after that but you know like I don't spend that long doing it because I don't have the concentration to sit and do it for that long um but yeah no I I tend to use my days off to study yeah. but probably all right if we're doing like hours we're at 15 hours a week I do something like that Great, thank you. And so, and it does. It, it really varies. So, uh, uh, as as the students were saying, you know, you know, some of us like to do a few hours a day. Others like to do it in bulk. And so, but knowing that you're in on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Thursday, and not always solidly between nine thirty and five, uh, you do get gaps in that day. It means that you can kind of flex around that. And so, if you are somebody who prefers to work eleven o'clock at night till three o'clock in the morning, you know that you can do that time. Uh, OK, so why do we choose Marjan? I have a lovely two slides of lists of reasons of why you should choose Marjan, whether it's as developing your kind of psychological literacy, your understanding of psychology as it applied to the world or all the extra stuff that we kind of put onto it. But uh, I am going to throw straight to Georgina and go, why did you choose Marjan? So it's small. I, I'm from Cornwall, everything in Cornwall is small, you know, like we don't have big schools, big unis, anything like that. So I like I looked at Marjorie, it was quite small, I was like, you know what, this is definitely that this is definitely where I want to go. And it's small class sizes. I'm someone who never really did essays before, because everything was exams. So when it comes to essays, I was like, I need that extra little bit of help. And because we are small class sizes, I can always email Hazel, Alice or whoever my lecturer is, and I'm like, can you find some time to meet me or just talk me through this um which has been really helpful and it's also a lot more relaxed um at Marjon than it might be with other unis when I came to my applicant day and I met Hazel and saw how like relaxed and chill she was I was like yes I was like this is what I need so um yeah I found it was a lot more suited to my personality to have that chill environment a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and it's been really, really great helping me improve. Thank you. How about you, Natasha? Yeah, I chose it for similar reasons as um, um, we just explained. For example, I also met Hazel at one of the open days and um, I really just liked how small the university was. It's not absolutely huge compared to some other unis I'm familiar with, like Plymouth. And it's a lot easier to navigate around. and. It's uh, everyone at the uni that I've met is usually quite relaxed and will, is really open to talk with you. And there's a few like chilled out societies if you're not a sporty person like Geek Squad and LGBTQ+, which I'm part of. And um, it's always look, people in there who are willing to talk to you no matter who you are. And um, a good thing as well with the courses being small is you get a lot of one on one help. And if you have a problem, like say, for example, you don't really understand an assessment or as Hazel mentioned before, if the timetable isn't really working for you, you can tell the lecturers and they'll get back to you really quickly and they'll be able to make the necessary adjustments to help you, which I quite like. So it's very like one on one and you're not just a number in a sea of like 100 plus pupils in one lecture. So yeah, that's the reasons that I chose it. Great, thank you. I, I temporarily forgot that you had had a nine o'clock start, hadn't you? And we you all objected so we moved it yes, yes. and so it is it's about for me why people choose marjan is it's about that conversation it's about that con continual sort of working with students uh you know i can talk about study life balance the girls have talked about class sizes you know we have people coming in from outside to do teaching aim sessions are all about study skills enhancements all about research but it's also about things like your employability. So from the moment you arrive, we're starting to think about where you might be going with your career, uh, where you might want to take your degree. So, for instance, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a session with Terry, who's the psychology careers coach, looking at um, how to apply for jobs. And although sort of some of the first year and second years who are in that session, not ready 
to think about applying for jobs yet, it's always useful to know how we can talk about the experiences in our degree, how we can gain some work experience in order to get those jobs we want at the end of it. But then there's other reasons why you might want to select us. We have an open door policy and I smile doing this whilst I clearly online kind of performing this PowerPoint. But that open door has uh, has moved with us. So when we are working in the office or working in the lab area, students can come and talk to us at any time. Likewise, now that I'm stuck at home working, um, students will call me on either on Zoom or on Teams and we can kind of talk. It's an open door. I'm happy to talk to anybody. We're all happy to talk to people. We have a great staff student ratio at Marjon. Uh, where uh, we're looking at kind of sort of about eight or nine students per member of staff. So you can have that contact that you want. We have some lab spaces which are only open to the psychology students. They are your space. There are many opportunities outside of the teaching room if you want to take them up. You don't have to, they're not compulsory, but they're there if you want to. For instance, I have uh, some students who are uh, sisters working at the Memory Cafe which is a cafe for people with dementia and their carers. And so the students will come in and run the sessions with us. Alistair, do you want to talk here about the psyching team? Yes, yeah, so twice a year usually we will run what's called um, the Plymouth March on Uni Psyching Team, which is a group of us who include both staff and students. And we attend the mass participation running events in Plymouth, which is the Plymouth 5k and 10k and the Ocean City Half Marathon and what we try to do is we try to take ideas from psychology that have theory and research backing them and to try and turn them into helpful stuff for the runners. So we try to help people to enjoy the running more, we try to help them to persevere a bit more, we try to help the experience of participating in and completing these running events a positive experience. So for example, we'll attend the events with uh, motivational signs that the staff and the students will hold up and we will run uh, usually what's called the, the Marge on High Five Station, which is where um, we were giving out high fives en masse. And I suspect that's something that's going to have to retire um, in the new COVID-19 era. Um, but we, we do what we can to support people in completing and enjoying the events. And I'll just tag in Georgina, if I may, because she's attended um, a psyching team as well. Yeah, so I absolutely love the psyching team. For myself, like I wasn't actually like that confident going around to people being like, yeah, yeah you can do it and cheering them on. But I actually got really into it. A lot of people seem to really appreciate us cheering them on. It was really, really nice to see them push that a little bit harder when they had some encouragement um, and it was a brilliant opportunity for me. It's great on my CV as well. Um, I absolutely, I just really enjoy the cycling team um, and it's a great opportunity for us students to, to join in. It's good fun. You get out and you... It's, for the half marathon, it's a four hour event and you're there and it's, it's just a great laugh. You, you're cheering people on, they're thanking you, they're enjoying it and it's great to see the psychology turned into something that makes a difference for the runners. Great, thank you. Thank you. And so uh, I'm very aware of time, so I'm just going to give you a, now that we have convinced you that coming to Marjon to do your psychology or your sport and exercise psychology degree is the best decision you could make, I probably ought to share with you our admission criteria. And so we're, what we're looking for, we look at each individual application as it comes in. And so I take as much from your personal statement as I do from your predicted grades or your grades. And so on a grade sense, we're looking at around BBC at level three, kind of A levels, or that would be um, three merits on BTEX or a mix between the two. Um, but what we're also interested in seeing your personal statement, things that you are interested in, whether it's something you've read, as Georgina mentioned earlier, something you've watched on the TV. Um, what makes you get up out of bed in the morning? What motivates you? Uh, and then we kind of think about offering you a place based on both your personal statement, but also um, your grades. We also require you to have a GCSE 
uh, whether that is a grade C or a level four or a level five, something equivalent to that in English and preferably some of the GCSEs around that as well. And so whilst I just move to this uh, last slide, which has got some lovely images on and all our contact details, um, I think now is a good time, Phil, for a few questions. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, thank you guys, thank you, Hazel. Um, yeah, we've had a couple of questions come in. Um, so uh, one uh, a little while ago was about placements. Um, so I was just wondering if, if Hazel, you could speak a little bit more about the freedom we give our students in terms of placements and the, the ability to, you know, to go out and sort of find their own placements. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. So the placements. So on the single honours psychology on the BSc psychology programme, um, the placements can be done um, all the way through the second year. Um, so we give our students lots of flexibility. So if they want to do um, kind of two hours a week all the way through their second year, they can do that. If they prefer to do their placement in a block over one of the holidays, for instance, Christmas or Easter, they can do that. If they prefer to kind of focus on their studies at the first half of the academic year and do all their placement kind of after Christmas into May, then that's OK as well. So it's kind of thinking about what would work for each individual student, but also what works well for the provider. So, for instance, uh, one of the students who uh, ended up working at one of the local hospitals, he uh, did a couple of kind of um, daytime shifts and then they invited him to do a twilight and then a night shift so he could kind of see what it's really like to work at 11 o'clock at night and what it's like to work on the ward at three o'clock in the morning. And we have a list of placements and local providers. So students can always go to our list and then kind of follow up from there or they can kind of create their own placement. I hope that helps. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you very much, Hazel. Um, so we've just got a question about uh, sort of following on from the, the slide on admissions. Um, so a question about um, whether you have to have studied uh, a psychology A-level. Um, do you mind just talking a little bit about that? Um, not at all. Well, I, I could, but shall I ask Georgina and Natasha? Uh, yeah, OK. Um, I did a, a psychology as an, uh, for my A-level and I got a B in it. And I definitely say it is a very beneficial thing to do because a lot of the stuff you learn in first year comes up in your A-levels. So, for example, theories, say learning about Freud and Pavlov, all of that comes up in first year and that's what one of your first exams, which is a multiple choice, is on. And it's quite beneficial as well because A-level, you'll be happy to know, is actually, um, I found it pretty difficult compared to how the degree is going at the moment with all the amount of knowledge you have to learn. And you also learn some topics in A level that is really beneficial to your essays that I've found. So you learn about issues and debates. So, for example, uh, issues with gender and cultural issues, and you get to apply that in your essays for good criticism as well, which make which makes your essay improve as well, which I think is quite good. So I definitely recommend doing psychology for A level before you start. Yeah, no, and I agree. If you have the opportunity to study psychology for A level before you start, then do that. It might be that if you are thinking more about kind of sport and exercise psychology, you might be able to get to do a couple of units in psychology kind of through your sports BTEC. So to take those options. But for those of you coming without a psychology A level, that's OK. We can we can work with you because we work with our individual students. We can give you extra reading. We can point you in different directions so that you can kind of build your knowledge over those first few weeks uh, and then kind of join in and have fun with us. Any other questions, Phil? Uh We've got uh, just a, a question here about um, sort of course content and, and whether there's a, a lot of maths involvement. Um, is there a lot of maths on the course? Uh, Georgina? <laughs> so no, there's not a lot of maths um, on this course. I'm someone who's done A-level maths, preparing myself to like do all the research methods myself, do everything to data. I was like, right, I'm gonna smash this. And then I came onto the course, we started doing research and there isn't any maths. You how like it's good to know obviously your mean, your mode, that kind of stuff. But um, we actually have some software that calculates everything for us, which is brilliant. But I, I also like doing maths, so 
but so no, there's <laughs> there's not a lot of maths in the course. <laughs> Thank you. And that's and that's why I asked you to answer that question. <laughs> and yes, and, and there's not a yeah, you know, right. The, the, the software that helps us do the uh, analysis. So we, we, we don't do stats by hand. The computer does that for us. And um, and if you are coming in with, um, you know, a level four in GCSE maths, then we can always kind of work with you and work with the library, with the slow skills team to kind of boost that. Uh, to, to boost that math knowledge for you. Um, so on my screen, on our screen now, I've put sort of um, contact details and things. So if you'd like to follow us on Twitter, uh, you can follow our meanderings on Twitter, or if you've got any questions following this session, feel free to drop me a line uh, at my email address there. Brilliant, thank you very much, Hazel. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you, Georgina. Thank you, Natasha. Um, yeah, as Hazel mentioned, um, if you do have any questions, then please feel free to get in touch. Um, I'm just going to drop our sort of general contact information in the Q&A bar now. So if you've got any questions that are sort of more general about Marjon, then we're happy to help. Um, but as Hazel said, if you've got specific questions uh, about the degrees, then please email Hazel. Um, and yeah, but if you've got any questions, please do get in touch. We're more than happy to answer any questions or any queries that you've got, um, whether you're looking at September entry or whether you're looking at 2021 or potentially even further away. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, thank you to the team for, for doing the presentation and answering all our questions and your questions. Um, so yeah, uh, please do ask any questions if you, if you have any. Um, but yeah, stay safe and have a great day. Thank you very much.